The builder design pattern is a creational design pattern used to construct complex objects step by step. It allows the creation of different types and representations of an object while keeping the construction process the same. This pattern is particularly useful when an object requires numerous parameters to be initialized or when the construction process involves multiple steps. Imagine a complex object that requires laborious step-by-step -step initialization of many fields and nested objects. Such initialization code is usually buried inside a monstrous constructor with lots of parameters, or even worse, it's scattered all over the client code. Take a look at this house. There's many variants of this house, for example, a house with a garage, a house with a swimming pool, a house with fancy statues, and a house with a garden. The program becomes very complex by creating a subclass for every possible configuration of an object. So when constructing a complex object with many parameters and nested objects, you often face two main issues. Number one is monstrous constructors. The initialization process involves setting many fields and nested objects, leading to constructors with an overwhelming number of parameters. Managing such constructors becomes difficult, and their usage across the code base gets scattered, making the object creation process unclear and hard to maintain. Number two is subclass explosion. If you rely on inheritance to handle different configurations of an object, you'll need to create a subclass for every possible combination of parameters. This quickly leads to an explosion in the number of subclasses as you introduce new parameters or features. For example, constructing a house might initially involve walls, floors, and a roof, but adding features like a backyard, heating, or wiring would require creating multiple subclasses to account for every possible combination of these features. Each new variation adds exponential complexity to the inheritance hierarchy, making the system difficult to extend and maintain. An alternative to subclassing is using a large constructor in the base house class with parameters for all possible configurations. While this does avoid breeding subclasses, it introduces a new issue, the telescoping constructor. What is a telescoping constructor? When you have numerous parameters, most will often be unused, making constructor calls very messy and confusing. For example, if only a few houses have swimming pools, the parameters for pools become irrelevant and clutter the constructor in most cases. The constructor with lots of parameters has a downside. Not all of the parameters are needed at all times. On the left, we're instantiating a new house with the parameters 4, 2, 4, true, followed by null, 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 which could extend indefinitely. A similar case is found on the right, in which we instantiate the house with a large number of true parameters. The solution to monstrous constructors and subclass explosion is the builder pattern, which solves both of these problems by allowing flexible, step-by-step -step object creation without bloating constructors or inheritance trees. It lets you create objects incrementally, reusing the same construction process across different configurations while avoiding subclassing for every variation. The builder pattern extracts object construction code into separate objects called builders, it allows complex objects to be built step by step without exposing the product during the construction process. The pattern breaks the construction process into steps, for example, build walls, build door, build windows. To create an object, you call only the necessary steps on the builder. This flexibility allows different configurations of the same object without requiring all steps. For different object representations, such as a cabin with wooden walls or a castle with stone walls, you can implement various builder classes. Each builder follows the same set of steps but constructs the object differently. For example, one builder might use wood and glass, another stone and iron, and a third gold and diamonds. By calling the same steps, you get a house, a castle, or a palace, depending on the builder that is used. This works because all builders follow a common interface, allowing client code to interact with them consistently. The director class encapsulates the sequence of builder steps needed to construct a product. It defines the order of execution while the builder implements the actual steps. The director determines which steps are required to create a functional product. Using a director is not mandatory. You can call the builder steps directly from client code. However, a director provides a convenient way to organize and reuse construction logic across your program. Additionally, the director abstracts away the construction details from the client. The client simply assigns a builder to the director, starts the process, and retrieves the final product from the builder. Now let's take a look at the structure. 
The builder interface declares product construction steps that are common to all types of builders. Concrete builders provide different implementations of the construction steps. Concrete builders may produce products that don't follow the common interface. Products are resulting objects. Products constructed by different builders don't have to belong to the same class hierarchy or interface. The director class defines the order in which to call construction steps so you can create and reuse specific configurations of products. The client must associate one of the builder objects with the director. Usually it's done just once via parameters of the director's constructor. Then the director uses the builder object for all further construction. However, there's an alternative approach for when the client passes the builder object to the production method of the director. In this case, you can use a different builder each time you produce something with the director. First, we have the product, which represents the final object we want to create. The product class has multiple parts, part A, part B, and part C. Each part represents a component of the product. As we move through the builder pattern, we'll gradually assign values to these parts. The show method lets us display the result once the product is complete. Next, we have the builder interface. It defines the steps required to build the product, but it does not implement them. Instead, it lays out the blueprint for creating the product. This interface ensures that all builders, regardless of their internal construction logic, follow the same steps, build part A, build part B, and build part C. Now comes the concrete builder. This class implements the steps defined in the builder interface and constructs the actual product. Here, each method assigns a value to the respective part of the product. For example, build underscore part A sets part A to the string literal of part A built, and so on. The get result method returns the completed product. The director controls the construction process by coordinating the builder. The director knows which steps to call in order to create a specific configuration of the product. The director uses the builder to create different versions of the product. It can call only the necessary steps. For example, in the construct minimal product method, it only builds part A. In contrast, the construct full product method builds all parts. Now let's take a look at the client code where everything comes together. First, we create an instance of concrete builder. Then we pass this builder to the director, which will control the construction process. We call construct minimal product to build a simple version. And we can see the output using product.show. Part A is built, but part B and part C are none. Next, we call construct full product, which builds all parts, and we get a complete product. The builder pattern simplifies the construction of complex objects by decoupling the construction logic from the final representation, making the code cleaner, flexible, and reusable.